Abel Saucier.
to show the continual overflow of the being drunk in the Holy Ghost is not how much, now listen to this, this is the key, because this is what, how many heard Prophetess Ashley, she taught last week and she said that your praise or your dance is a language unto God. Yeah. Amen. So when you can't articulate words, your praise articulates, right? When you can't articulate words, this is what happens. It begins to what? Your praise begins to what? Your dance begins to what? Articulate what you can't articulate naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Amen. So in this house, you are free. Look at your neighbor and say you are free. Say, neighbor, neighbor, you want to steal my praise. Now, now I want you to hit your legs just like this with both hands. Say, flesh, you want to steal my praise. I'm going to speak to my God. I'm going to praise Him with my lips. I'm going to praise Him with my hands. I'm going to praise Him with my feet. Come on. Whatever it is, this inside of you, because this is the key, it's not how much Holy Ghost we can have. You'll give the Holy Ghost. Because if you'll give him all, then the Holy Ghost will help you take over all and conquer all. Come on, y'all didn't hear me. Come on. Come on, open your mouth and say thank you, Jesus. I don't praise him. This is what happens, Prophet Marcus. This is one thing I've learned about walking with God. Some people can praise him for what they see, but once you see it, it wasn't by faith. But when you praise him for what you can't see, Thank you. 
Father God, begin to heal. We thank you that you begin to restore. We thank you that you, Father God, begin to arrange every aspect. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that every bloodline that's represented by the people in this room, every son and daughter, we ask you now, we don't come just to meet, we don't come just to hang out, but we come to ask you that you would overflow us, that you would saturate us, that you would do something so profound, that it would send revival through our families, it would send revival through our bloodlines, to the wayward daughter, to the wayward son, to the broken families, we call you back, we call you back, in the name of Jesus. One testimony and I'm done. I was in Atlanta last year and all of a sudden I see this big hole begin to open up in the midst of the church I was in at a conference and I said Lord what is this he said this is the blood that I've been sucked in to hell it was talking about different blood but he was getting very personal with me but he says if you'll praise me he says I, he said your praise is going to go before you I didn't completely understand it I didn't even have the exact scripture I needed that moment but I know his voice the moment I went to praise next thing you know praise broke out in that place and the hole closed up I will share something the next day not playing my nephew walked in this door and not only did he surrender his life to Jesus he got filled with the Holy Ghost he went back to his church and he began to testify to the youth he says it's like God walked inside of me come on come on you hear y'all missed it when you begin to praise things begin to shift when you begin to pray, it's not an emotional thing, but your emotions will be affected. Amen? They'll be put in a mind. But look at your neighbor and say, I'm praising. I'm praising the King. Come on, I'm praising the King. See, this is a line in y'all's minds. I'm praising the King. I'm praising the King. I don't know where y'all going, but we're praising the King. Come on. In the name of Jesus.
feeling it. He probably wasn't feeling those 39 stripes. He probably wasn't feeling dragging that cross. He probably wasn't feeling hanging there. But he did it anyway. If he never does another thing for you, that was enough. That was enough. Get over your flesh. Get over your emotions. Get over your dignity. And just praise him. 
but in real, in real time, as, as the young generation say, that God is really my reality because the Bible says in Him we live, move, and have our being. So that means there's nothing in real time that we can do. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't do it without God. Come on, encourage somebody around you. Say, I can't do it without God because He's my Abba. I made a decision that He would belong to me. And I will belong to him. I will now, and he will belong to me. And I will belong to him. We're moving.
choose to do on Saturday. Look at your neighbor and say, Sunday is for church. Say it like you mean it, like you play the beat. Say, Sunday is for church. Sundays are for church because this is the day that we draw strength from our brothers. This is the day that we draw strength from our leaders when they pour back into us. They pour and give us wisdom that we need so that we can fight throughout the week. So anytime that I come to church, I'll be good. I'll be good coming in God's presence. I'm like David. He said, I was glad when they set up to be loved to the house of the Lord. Old folks who say there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's peace in the house of the Lord. There's salvation yeah. in the house of the Lord. And I promise you that after the many things that I've seen, I was driving here looking at major accidents and I'm just grateful that I'm saved in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Look at your neighbor say, I'm saved. I'm saved. You know, when there's uh, severe attacks that go on and certain storms that are going on, you know, we have our friends, they always send a notification saying we're safe where we are, we're safe. Over here, look at your neighbor and say, I'm safe where I'm at. I'm safe. I don't know about you, but I'm safe. I don't know about you, but I'm safe where I am. Let's throw those hands in this place.
and offerings and announcements. When you say he's faithful, that means there's a finished word for what you're facing. Come on. So when you have facing circumstances, you're facing something outside of you. You when you say you're faithful, God, you're the source inside of me with a finished word for that which I'm facing. So if you're facing something, he's faithful. Look at your neighbor and say he's faithful. Every morning when I get up, I look in the mirror and say he's faithful. Amen. There's good things that happen and there's crazy things that happen sometimes, but he's still faithful. Honestly, can I help some of you real quick before we transition the tithes and offers? Some of you are facing certain things that you're taking personal, but God's going to do the miracle and make you the line in the situation and show that it's possible to not back down, to not cower down, not to compromise, but to walk up and keep your eyes lifted unto the hills huh, where your strength you need comes from. Amen? So if you ever see a deficit, you say, okay, there's multiplication coming. <laughs> see, it's the way we think. It's the way we begin to, now we entertain that. But when I see a deficit, I see multiplication. Come on. When I see the enemy steal something, I see now intelligence of the mind of Christ coming from multiplication. The scripture and stand on it and watch the boldness of your God stand up. He may have stole it, but he must multiply it back seven ways. For we're an hour, there is restitution and that of restoration coming to the body of Christ. Amen? So look at your neighbor so they may have been a loss. There may have been a deficit. But there's a return and there's a multiplication with it. Not just my finances. He said he'd supply my needs. But my children are coming back. My children are strong in the Lord. My parents shall know the Lord. Come on. My aunts shall know the Lord. The one in the ditch shall know the Lord. Come on. I'm trying to take you into a place that a dollar can't buy. I'm trying to bring you into a place of true wealth. Look at your neighbor and say, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. something to you for the manifestation of it. One thing that I've learned about the kingdom of God and when it comes to the church and what we do, number one, on the day of Pentecost, promise came, which means family come back. When family comes back, now it gives an ability for a place of a people that come together now that can bring healing. Amen? That now they'll get the, hope, the, the true physician can show up through you. Right? You're a facilitator. But this is one thing I've learned. We gotta be more than family, because family, and we gotta be more than a place of facilitation. Hear me out. We must be an army. Why must we be an army? Why all the way through the Old Testament talking about uh, overtaking and all this stuff, and we see army and everything prophetically that saying Jesus coming to war the war. But now he's saying we want to do more than have success. Because most people think success is gathering 500 people on a weekend or have a conference that filled every seat. But I want you to understand we don't look for success, we look for faithfulness. For in faithfulness, there's success. So if I succeed in what culture says, I might miss what faithfulness has already done. Out of here. So when you look at Deuteronomy 8 and 18, it says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, because there's a supernatural release coming to your life. I'm telling you, there's been some that has been, they've been out there, they've been doing this, they've been doing that. I literally, when I was praying, I started to see kids come back. I started to see God's come back. I started to see redemption. Your prayers have been Remember the Lord your God for it's a heat. It's a heat. That's a capital H. Who is giving you power to make well. Amen? That he may confirm his covenant. Covenant family, right? 
we do life together. Which he swore to your fathers at his is that day. When we begin to look at wealth, it's much more than what people think of dollars. It actually means this if you bring it down, small army. So because of the covenant of Christ Jesus and what he did in his perfection to redeem us, we're family. But when the Holy Ghost fell, right? With that, we have places of health. We have places, as you said earlier, I'm glad to go unto church together to gather together to gain strength for my brother. Amen? But also, say, I'm on assignment. This is what I want you to start doing. I have to have visuals. I have to have reminders. This, my Paul told his sons, he would say, practice. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to practice. So if the enemy comes after your bloodline, or the enemy comes after you, you know what you do? You go immediately then. I'm not calling you an evangelist. you got a testimony. And you got the blood of Jesus. You go, you, you march right out of that place. After you've, you've encountered God there, you get with him personally. You go up to the market and say, you know what? I'm going after another one. And I'm going after another one. And I'm going after another one. So he's on Timothy, you don't forget to do the work of the man. Just tell him, and the world has just got to do with tithes and offering. Wealth is much more than a dollar. Amen? If we look at prosperity, when we actually look at it, it's about 15% on a 100% scale. Amen? I was, I was riding in the mountains, and the Lord began to speak to me as I was praying for different ones. I'm just going, I'm just transparent. how I am, right? And... I began to, I got a message from a brother and they're doing some body work in different places. And as they began to cry to me, or not cry to me, began to just call me or whatever, I began to pray with them, right? I began to pray and I said, the Lord says rest. I want to teach you something about man. And it's not your heart intent about what I'm about to say, but I'm going to show you the trick of the enemy. You ready? When you look at what you now need, but which has already been promised, man that will call you to chase it and say how is it going to be fulfilled and how am I going to do this? Everybody in the body that I'm in the Bible that I see was by faith and everything else showed up. You won't gain anything in this realm or in the second heaven is only in Christ Jesus. The manifestation of what you need of wealth is to be unlocked there and say look at your neighbor and say it's not just for me. Say it's for the army. Regions are sustained. Both are just as vital as the other. Amen? And say so it's not just a gap. But it's a place of sending. Amen? Last part. Say it's coming back. Say he's multiplying. It shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you today that you will surely perish. What am I saying? There's times I've had to praise him and he's told me to do something and I didn't even have a house to live in. But I trusted the voice that met me in the most broken place in my life. And when I stepped out of that place, and even though my bank account didn't say it, everybody else around said something different, his voice said, do it. Amen? In the greatest times, look at your neighbor and say, the greatest times. I still serve. I still praise him. I still remember him. Amen? So at this time, as... We began to, um, Josh, if you grab the basket, um, um, as we began to come into a place, how many knows that when you sow, that's a part of worship? Amen? And so with that, it's not because I said this, it's because God said this. Amen? He said be a cheerful giver. Amen? If you have an issue with money, why are you asking for it? Why are you praying for it? It'll, it'll flip your thinking on that, in other words. Every, you can't outgive God, I promise you that. Every time, and everything ain't tangible return of a dollar. 
sometimes there is supernatural peace you gain for a season and then that after that a season comes whatever you planted now begins to grow fruit you begin to eat of it amen and others begin to eat of it if you want to sow by uh, uh, by card or however you go to rim.church there's a place to give there rim.church and uh, you can put specifically. Now we have what's coming up October the 7th. And I got some announcements here. If you want to sow into the um, Sober Living, which is um, a, a transi virtual transition of, of help to bring people into proper soil, proper, proper atmosphere, and give them a safe place until they can be sent out back, either back home or to their new place to build. Um, you can put that earmark in and let it uh, um, to go there. But whatever you want to sow into um, for the kingdom of God, go forth there and do so. Anybody with uh, that, we take cash as places I went through today and it said we do, we're a cashless thing. I said, I heard my wise voice said, that's against our constitutional rights. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's illegal. Amen. As long as you just stay quiet about it, they'll just keep doing what they want. They'll twist what they want. They'll rewrite what they want. Amen. It's okay to speak up. Amen. We take cash here, in other words. <laughs> if you write a check, R-I-M.Church, or you ain't got to put the dot, we'll take the dot too. Amen. Um, and if so, whatever, go ahead. Josh, go serve them. If anybody just stick your hand up, if you need a, a thing. Father God, I thank you for the multiplication in every place of the obedience to your voice. I thank you, Father God, if there's any deficit, I speak to it now, and I thank you because of your word, it shall manifest overflow. Father God, according to your word, you will supply all needs. Lord, I thank you, Father God, in the midst right now of whatever's needed. You are a good Father, and you manifest more than enough. I thank you, Father God, no cover shall ever be empty. I thank you, no, there shall never be one without a house. I thank you, Father God, that we don't ask today in a place. Father God, as we sow in worship, as we give, we don't ask in a place just to fill our cabinets, or build us a house, or give us a vehicle, or anything else that we need, Father God, we stretch on out and say, Father God, we want the ability to feed a nation. We want the ability to build houses and nations. We want the ability to build cities. Father God, we want the ability to do everything we can do to help anybody that you put in contact with us. And Lord, I thank you that you're a good Father and you'll release it suddenly. And Lord, we bless your name for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say it is so. Yes, Amen. I'm excited. How many of us say give double honor? Woo! Amen. I'm grateful today for Pastor Jesse and Pastor Vicky as they're here all the way from Kingsport, Tennessee to be with us. Amen. Here to celebrate a mile marker of a, a, a graduation of a of a of a of a brother. But also we family, amen. I mean, I got the honor to travel like uh, the first quarter of this year to be with them. And look, we don't just go to ministry. We eat Mexican food, and my wife's women will settle for chilies, and um, you know, <laughs> uh, amen. Amen. She likes authentic Mexican. She don't like Taco Bell. We like cheese dip jalapenos, don't we, boys? With that. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate you guys coming down and being with us. First time in corporate setting that down in Georgia with us, right? Amen. Come on, let's get to Miami. <laughs> Pastor Benjamin, his lovely wife, is there now with them, traveling all the way down. Come on. Come on. They got in that car and they squeezed in there. And I said, family's supposed to be close. <laughs> Amen. The blessing is I got two vehicles going back, right? <laughs> we got a multiplication. Amen. As I honor my brother, Prophet Dion. Amen. Come on, let's honor that God. The apostolic and the prophetic is very real. Amen. Jesus is the apostle, chief apostle, and he is the prophet. Look at your neighbor say, the apostle and the prophet. But he said he gives gifts unto man. And 
and I honored Prophet Dion as uh, last year uh, we began to navigate what God is doing regionally. Amen. You go in and you build something. I'm about to change, I promise you. I'm about to shift. I know Pastor Angie got something burning in her belly about to release. Um, and so Jeremiah said, I got fire shut up in my bones. And she's full of the fire of the Holy Ghost. But our heart are similar for regions, not just a just a region, but regions and nations. Amen. And so with that, how many knows that apostles sometimes can't see but see things, but a prophet has been built in a way to see things that apostles can't see. Amen. I got access to God, but I don't I'm not gifted the same way. Amen. So with that, when we see the it was built upon the apostles and prophets, then you actually are then you're actually neglecting the church, the region, whatever God has already paid for when there's one absent from the other. And what I love about prophets, as much as they can see and they bring clarity, one thing I've learned about this is I begin to have more prophets that really come around me and they're more than just acquaintances, they're brothers, right? Or sisters. Sometimes a prophet, and a prophet knows it's a mature one, they'll call on the apostle and say that they'll gain strength in those times. They'll draw on each other, my rights. Yeah, the prophet Dion, we, we can call, we can begin to gain strength. Because an ox is that like an apostle, if you need that as a figure, but a, a prophet is like an eagle. So they can see from a place that others can't see, but also there's a strength that an ox has to keep going. Amen. So they, they, they work together. So I am grateful for my brother um, and what he's been doing in this nation. How, how long have you been in ministry, Prophet Neil? 18 years. You just hit 30, right? Thanks, man. You, you put it on Facebook. I say 30. Amen. Right? It's not about the age. It's the maturity and the spirit. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbors out here for Jesus and Jesus on you. Come on, I'm here for Jesus and Jesus only. We're going to do something very special at the end of what, after whatever Pastor Angie has and what she facilitates and releases and all that good stuff. Do not leave. Look at your neighbor and say, strap your seatbelts. If you need to oxygen your mask, put it on yourself first, not your neighbor. Then if they need help, put it on them. In other words, you can't receive something or give something away unless you received it first. Amen. Come on, Pastor Angie of this house. Amen. Part of the oh, oh, I didn't go down, so I'm sorry. Oh, I forget to do that every time. Put your um, your oxygen mask back up for a second. Somebody did pray for me. These announcements. But there's one part I had to I had to do announcements today. Amen? Sniper's Assembly Intercession is going virtual starting this Saturday. In other words, they come on every Saturday, intercession for the house, for when we're in other nations, where we're praying for every ministry we're connected to. Um, come on, where's, where's Prophet Ismail at? Woo! Uh, that's on she leads that. She's our lead head intercessor. Amen? So you'll be sending out the thing, uh, the link. Evangelism Friday. Said Evangelism Friday. They will be meeting June the second at Carnesville location, six thirty. Evangelist Joshua is heading this up and leading it. Amen. And with that, Abigail, um, she is taking care of the kids, pouring out to the kids, along with Miss Shirley. Amen. Why y'all go out? We're continuing the 12 spiritual principles every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. here. Amen? Oh, I was going to say 6.30 then. Okay, 7. Yeah, okay. Here. <laughs> so in other words, she said, if you ain't here by 6.30, you're late. Amen? Time management will shift you in the body, I mean, in the kingdom of God. Do y'all know that? Sometimes people have missed their lessons because they was late. I won't go there, though. And then the Sober Saray Charity Gala is coming up October the 7th, uh, 6th uh, to 9. Order tickets to RIM.Church. With that, um, this is, and y'all will hear more and more about this, but we have a two-man two sober living that's in the little cabin down there for people either coming out of a rehab 
in a rehab, coming out of prison, kind of that, you know, anything that they're ready to get off drugs or any kind of addiction that is. Um, and we want to, this is a fundraiser for y'all to dress up and love on your family, but also be able to bring a sustaining power to this region that people have a safe place as they recover. Amen? So with that, we are, that's my heart, y'all. Y'all want to know my heart? You want to know how does that sustain a region? Marketplace and give a blessed place for people to recover. And I promise you that God shifts everything from there. Through the revelation he's given me. Last but not least, amen, this is why I had to, uh, uh, or I needed to do this. We will not have service next Sunday here. We will have it Saturday at 6 p.m. Saturday at 6 p.m. Check your calendar if you ain't got nothing I need you. Next Saturday, 6 p.m. Amen? Yes, 6 p.m. Look at your neighbor and say, Sunday. Sunday. I need you to get in the van. I need you to get in the van. We all want y'all to meet, and uh, Shane, Elder Shane, will take and uh, give y'all direction. Uh, we will carpool down. We are going um, with a dear brother, a dear friend. Um, uh, me and uh, Prophet Dion will be there, the facilitators. Um, uh, I can't give you all the details because it's a surprise, but Apostle Tate is doing something special, and me, he has asked me and um, Prophet Dion to come and be a part of what the new they are building, and we um, are going to do as the Lord says do. But look at your neighbor and say it was never about one or two. Never about one or two. It's about we. It's about we. And as you come an army, you begin to multiply and you spread out and you go together. Amen. Amen. So I won't look. If you are a part of this house, I, I'm charging you to be at the look. We're gonna make it where you don't have to pay to get there. All you gotta do is shave it out in your time. You would have been going here at three anyways. I want it's at 1:30 out there, so we'll get the specific times of which y'all are leaving from the house. Probably around 11. Um, y'all know how Shane is. He's like me. We got to be early to everything. Amen. 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 Are y'all ready? Come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, say Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus. I love this woman of God here. She come and I guess it was when we first established about a year after we established in commerce. And I always testify this, but this is one of the things, first thing, the first day we met on like a Wednesday, we met on a Friday, we was meeting on Friday nights then. And it was the first time I seen the tangible glory like fog. We met on a Wednesday, and then on Wednesday after we come into agreement on what was going on, she would you preach or did you preach on that Friday? I think she just came to be a part on that Friday, but we, we shook hands and said, hey, we, we're doing this together. And she understood the vision of the house. And that night, we always had food, kind of like we did the day before, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm in there getting ready. We didn't have as many people even here then as far as like to help do things or whatever. We had a lot of people, but we didn't have as many like workers.
basically is my covering, it's my puzzle. Who shall I stand? And who will go for us? Then 
beyond anything he had ever known. Amen? And I think about this. Isaiah had faithfully served. He was in ministry. His ministry spanned 64 years. At this time, he had, he had stewarded what the Lord had given him. It had been 20 years. And I come by to tell you today for the faithful. Isaiah had been faithful. But I'm telling you today that encounters are coming for the faithful. Hallelujah. Encounters for the faithful. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh. And the Bible says it was in the year that King Uzziah died. And Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. In other words, I didn't read about it in a book. Though that's fine, well, and good. Hallelujah. I didn't hear the preacher say it down at the church and live off of that. But I saw it for myself. Well, I saw the Lord of hosts and I beheld. knowing that we have of our God. Amen? Amen. Oh, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Amen? Amen. Glory. His eyes beheld the King of Glory. And sometimes we read past that, but oh, my. oh, that is, oh, Oh, I can't wait to faith gives you faith and sight and I'm hoping face to face. Amen. Yeah. Woo, I'll take one of those encounters right now. Right. Woo! Ascending, ascending, ascending. Satan can't ascend. All he can do is go to and fro. But we have the power and the ability to ascend into the secret place of the most high. Whoa! Yeah. And fly above it. Fly above the chaos, fly above the lies of the culture, the woke culture, the lying devil culture. That says men can be women and women can be men. But God created that. And woman in his image, he created a man. Hallelujah. But in the year, woo, King Uzziah died. Isaiah saw the Lord. Oh, of this encounter. As a result, Isaiah Isaiah was about to see in a whole new way. Something was about to open up to Isaiah and I'm telling you today I preach prophetically that encounters are coming to the bride of Christ and we're going to see what we've never seen.
Uzziah had reigned over Judah. Now, I want to tell you, Uzziah and Isaiah were cousins. It's kind of like these kiddos playing back there. They're growing up together. This was Uzziah, and this was Isaiah. And Isaiah had beheld, amen, Uzziah's greatness and seen the great things that he'd done for the kingdom of Judah, amen. And perhaps Isaiah had got into a false security, oh, because everything was prosperity around them. And maybe he had, to a degree, got his eyes on Uzziah because after all he had access to royalty. His cousin was the king. So he had access to royalty. But I come by to tell you today that we've got access to the very throne we will grace. To the most holy, your most holy word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and I think about Isaiah. When he said, I saw the Lord. He saw his greatness. But I also think he saw his grace. Oh, he had to, actually. In a phenomenally Great. I don't even know if that's a word. That's a supernatural word. He saw it in a greater way. Now I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine this. Once a year, once a year, the high priest could go in to the Holy of Holies. And they would tie a rope with a veil around their ankle. Because if they went in there and some sin and confessed, whoa, we're going to pull you out. I ain't going get you. So here, Isaiah is. Can you imagine him right there, not in a temple made with man's hands on earth, but in the heaven, the temple, amen, and the glory of God filled the temple, amen. Can you imagine the grace that he saw at this time before the new covenant, before Jesus coming, amen, and redeeming us and justifying us from our sins. Can you see the grace that Isaiah got a glimpse of even to be in the throne room? It was unheard of. Oh my gosh. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh. And he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. His train filled the temple. Now earthly kings have that, those monarchs have that train and you know somebody be following them and I'd be tripping all up in that thing up in here and all of that stuff. But they have somebody to come and hold it behind. But I'm going to tell you, Isaiah's train just wasn't long. Hallelujah. Isaiah's train filled the whole temple. I mean, uh, God's train filled the whole temple. And Isaiah saw it, amen. And that train denotes uh, power and position. Power and position. Amen. Oh, so here Isaiah is. And he's so familiar with Uzziah's reign. Amen. And here he is. Uzziah dies. Uzziah dies. Now, we could say that in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah's life as he knew it was never the same again. Has anybody in life had one of those moments and forever your life was changed. It had been one way, and forever it's changed into a whole different way. There was devastation. Ha, Shabbat. So, oh, sister, the Lord is, whew, he is doing something. So in you right now, amen. Encounters are coming. Encounters are coming. Ha, that's coming. So, help us. Oh, yeah, come on, let you hear that praise. Come on, brother, help us. Know what I'm coming now. <laughs> 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 Would you help me, brother? Hey, man, see, y'all give him a hand clap. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. So here I say, here he's devastated. In the year that King Uzziah died, he looks around him. Nothing is the same. The nation is not the same. Isaiah has been 
devastated. He grew up with this man. He knew the familiarity, the security of this man reigning 52 years. He had seen the greatness. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this man is dead. And it was not just something that happened to a state, a uh, uh, nation, but it, 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 it impacted Isaiah in such a personal and profound way. Because he was kin. And I believe that Isaiah has suffered some trauma. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Because the way Uzziah, King Uzziah died, God struck him with leprosy. Because he went in and tried to take the place of a priest. Oh, shut up, bye, 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 bye. Instead of a king. Oh! Now, I don't understand all that. But he died with leprosy. And I can imagine that the people of that day were devastated and they were stunned and they were like just pure shock that Uzziah, their hero, somebody who put the Holy Ghost in, had died this way. You think of a leader that you look up to. Oh, something devastating. It affects the entire body. So here was Uzziah, but dead in this year. But for Isaiah, a man, I believe, I believe he went through some trauma. Seeing his nation, seeing the king, he had had access to. And he, in, an, in an event of trauma in our lives, when something happens that is very traumatic, has anybody in the room ever been through trauma? Yep. Tragedy? Yeah. And in that event, we as human beings want to reach out to something familiar. If I'm falling, I'm going to grab a hold of this table, something stable to catch me. Do you hear me today? And when Isaiah was traumatized, what I love about Isaiah is he could
spirit of the living God that encounters are coming for those that will press in. Those that will press in. Those that will press in to the presence of the Lord. Past your circumstances. Past your feelings. Past your emotions. Past the chaos. Past the lack. Oh, there is encounters that are coming. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Stand of the devastation, and I know that there are many, many, many sitting in devastation today, but encounters are coming that is going to be released in the body of Christ that's going to bring saturation of the presence of the Most High God instead of a devastation to a people. Amen. They're wanting and they're waiting to see the hand of God from you and through me, church. We must seek Him like never before. Oh my goodness. So Uzziah's throne is empty. But God, thankful. I'm thankful that He's the same this surely today, yesterday, right. and forever. Oh, just a few more things. Just a few more things. Amen. <sighs> Isaiah had an encounter. Hallelujah. That changed his ministry in such a way. Now he had heard, he had heard the seraphim saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now when you say something two, two times, it puts special emphasis on it. But when you say it three times, amen, that means, amen, that it is in the most highest, superior way in the world. Amen. And he didn't say just holy. They didn't say just holy, holy, but holy, holy, holy. Three times in the Bible when it's repeated, it's in the most highest, superior Amen. So this was he saw God's holiness. He saw the holiness. He saw, he said, Woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips. I am telling you, when I get close to the Father, I get close to the Father. I see things in me. I see things in me. And honestly, I think until we have our glorified body, we will continue. And I think that you were talking about that humility. And if we'll have ourselves, and we'll find our sins in any way. And he told us to run from his presence like Adam and Eve did, but he wants us to run to it. And the 
blessed and beautiful thing about it? We're under the new covenant. Remember, this was the old covenant. Hallelujah. We have access to the very throne room of grace. He said to come boldly. Come boldly into the throne room of grace. That you may obtain mercy. That you may find help in the time of need. How much more encounters? I believe Isaiah had more. But how many know today we can have more if we go in? If we'll be hungry enough. So yeah, somebody say more Lord. More Lord. More Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Everything the church, the right of Jesus needs, will be provided, not only physically, but emotionally, because in the last days, perilous times have come. Amen, amen, amen. It's going to take some, some more of His presence than we've ever experienced. Let me tell you, I need more, I want more. I got to have more.
saturate us with encounters with King Jesus. Saturate our children. Saturate the prodigals throughout the land. Saturate the churches. Saturate us with your presence. Grant us encounters. Encounters. Encounters that are counted. Let it be a beginning place of pressing in.